Hey guys, Tiger Trot 23 here. Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you found a lot of good stuff over the last year and have been finding some cool things uh, these past few months too. I know I've had a lot of luck lately and uh, I'm going to share with you today some of the more interesting things that I found and also some tips on how to get some good deals online. Um, part of the fun of record collecting, of course, is you never know what you're going to get. Uh, I like to go to various thrift stores, garage sales, and check on various classified websites to uh, find people who are selling their record collections. And uh, a great part about this hobby is just the chance to meet people and talk about music. A lot of people who are selling records on uh, on um, Craigslist, for example, maybe uh, they're having a yard sale or something because their um, family member moved away or passed away, and they might not have much of a connection to the music themselves, but a lot of times uh, I find collections being sold by their original owners, and it's a great way to talk about the uh, history of the music and how some of these things ended up in uh, different parts of the world. Um, but in addition to doing that sort of uh, local collecting, I do like to uh, travel a bit too, sometimes when I'm performing in various uh, bands around the area here in Florida. I'm going uh, through all the different cities in Tampa, Jacksonville, even down into uh, the Florida Keys sometimes and there's a lot of great stores, record stores and um, antique stores that have a uh, record uh, department and uh, I always find cool things when I'm traveling as well. But the third way to buy records these days has really expanded in the past few years and uh, that is to buy records online. Now, a lot of people use eBay and um, a website called Discogs to uh, buy and trade uh, used records. But in the past few years, especially with this uh, record collecting and listening coming back into fashion, uh, so many record plants, record pressing plants, and record labels have been reissuing or even releasing new artists on new vinyl. So. Um, with that, there's more and more websites where you can buy brand new sealed records by some of your favorite uh, artists. I, a uh, friend of mine who has an Amazon Prime account, was uh, recently telling me about a great uh, resource that can uh, kind of give you some updates on where to find new uh, records for good deals, and I'll post it in the uh, description of the video. It's a Reddit community called Vinyl Deals and uh, that's where he recently found and shared with me a uh, great collection of deals that was available on Amazon, on uh, a couple different eBay sellers, and believe it or not even Walmart. They're selling uh, new records these days and there's a a really great selection they have. The problem I have with almost all of these websites besides Discogs is that it's very hard to find what you're looking for or to browse through. So uh, you can hardly you can hardly organize the searches. It's not very refined yet. And uh, another problem is uh, oftentimes when the records do arrive in the mail, they have some uh, defects like warps for example and I think that's just a result of these big companies like Amazon and Walmart kind of getting into a uh, new line of products that they're not very familiar with and I have a feeling they're storing them improperly which is resulting in damage. Almost 50% of everything that I've bought lately from these guys has been warped in some way but because they're big companies they have a great customer service and they'll let you exchange and return um, if there's anything wrong with any of the uh, albums that you buy. But anyway, 
this um, Reddit page called Vinyl Deals uh, recently was showing some of the uh, great deals that some of the members found and uh, it kind of uh, saves you some time as the buyer um, not having to scroll through so much uh, stuff on the poorly organized Amazon or, or Walmart pages and uh, anyway here's uh, the first thing that I got it's a uh, reissue of the uh, Ziggy Stardust um, soundtrack album which is a live concert it's the final um, concert from the uh, Ziggy Stardust era um, when David Bowie was doing that character and playing those songs and uh, this reissue was pressed uh, just in the past few years it's on super good high quality vinyl um, pretty thick pressing and actually manufactured in Europe as well it's a double album it's not the complete concert but it's all the songs that were originally released on the uh, uh, original pressing and it comes with these pretty cool uh, inner sleeves that have some uh, information on them it's a gatefold pressing and uh, it was uh, pressed, I think, somewhere in one of those European pressing plants that are known for their uh, high quality audio mastering. And uh, this one, fortunately, had no problems. I listened to it, it played great and sounded great. And uh, for a live recording, it really enhanced the uh, quality of the audio um, to listen to it on. Uh, perfect condition vinyl record. Uh, speaking of David Bowie, one of his uh, friends and collaborators after the uh, Ziggy Stardust period was the famous Brian Eno, who uh, has worked with uh, everyone from Pavarotti to U2 to Coldplay these days. Uh, anyway, back in the uh, mid 70s, before he uh, went on to work with David Bowie. One of his big influence influences was um, some of the uh, German electronic and experimental rock music that was going on in a couple different cities. And uh, one of the great bands from that era uh, was called Cluster. Uh, they were two guys, uh, Mobius and Rodelius, um, and they kind of invented this new way of playing um, using analog um, and electronic instruments without using sequencers um, in the way that some of their contemporaries like Tangerine Dream would do. They kind of developed their own technique for improvising using electronic sounds uh, created through analog instruments like a drum machine that's built into a uh, family organ or um, special effects, simple special effects pedals like echo, reverb, and delay. And they created some extremely original and innovative sounds and um, recording techniques that have influenced all music that you hear today. Part of the reason that they reached a wider audience was thanks to Brian Eno. Uh, after he heard their album, which they collaborated with the guitarist from Noi, uh, Michael Rotor. Um, they formed a band called Harmonia, and that album is a classic from, I think, uh, 74, called Music Von Harmonia. And that band, Harmonia, is just the two guys from Cluster, plus this guitarist from Noi. Um, they had a second album after that called Deluxe in 1975 and uh, then they kind of retired and and Cluster took a little break and Michael Rotor went on to uh, start his solo career but Brian Eno had heard these albums and liked them so much kind of because they were going along with some of his uh, philosophy on ambient um, 
music and some of the electronic experimentations that he had done earlier in his career with Roxy Music. Um, their musical philosophies kind of went hand in hand, so it was kind of a natural fit that they would want to collaborate with each other. So Brian Eno reached out to them in 1976 and kind of convinced them to get back together and do some recording sessions with him. And uh, this is the album that resulted from that. It's called uh, Harmonia and Eno 76, Tracks and Traces. It's also a double album, and uh, it wasn't, it was recorded in 1976, but wasn't released until I think the 90s on CD. And this is the uh, reissue from 2009 on the Grown Land record label. Uh, it's a double album. It's not quite the same quality as the uh, Bowie pressing. It's not a gatefold and there's no inserts or any special information, but the music on this is so innovative and, and interesting. And especially with Brian Eno collaborating with them, he had some of his uh, unique touch too and even sings on one of the tracks. Uh, usually these guys would be doing mostly instrumental music, but he adds that touch to it. Uh, anyway, the Bowie album it usually retails for somewhere in the $30 range and because of the special deal that someone had uh, found online for some reason uh, uh, one of these big retailers had it reduced all the way down to $7 so I bought a couple copies back then um, and this uh, Eno and Harmonia album was also a great price only uh, um, about $20 something that would usually be priced at $30 Anyway, moving on, speaking of German electronic music, I recently got this uh, used uh, record at a store in Tampa. It's a uh, composer named Stockhausen, who was uh, working from the 50s all the way into the 80s. Um, some of his coolest uh, compositions, I think, were in the 60s. And uh, I listened to an interesting... Uh, radio documentary about his life. There's a uh, a big uh, religious influence on some of his music that's kind of hard to to uh, tell, but he was raised in a strict Catholic thing, uh, and a lot of the ideas that he has in his music have an influence from that structure. Uh, this album has some amazing sounds on it. It uses... Um, all these different microphone techniques to get a bunch of uh, electronic sounds out of the um, recording. And uh, this I got for only five bucks. I also got this uh, modern 20th century record with a pretty cool cover, also on the Columbia label from the 60s. Uh, this is a Leonard Bernstein, the great conductor and composer of West Side Story. And he's uh, conducting some new music by various composers, including the Hungarian composer uh, Ligeti, who did some music that was used in the uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey soundtrack to great effect. Um, Stockhausen's music, including a piece um, that used... Uh, tape recordings of children's voices in a uh, sort of collage style was very influential on on the Beatles for their um, Revolution 9 song and also on uh, Tomorrow Never Knows as well as the uh, legendary unreleased um, Carnival of Light. Uh, I also got this recently from a friend of mine. He found it at a uh, flea market, and I bought it off him. It's an original UK pressing of the Buzzcocks debut album. And this has some uh, really great songs and, and uh, playing on it as well. A lot of punk bands from back then and even today, they fall into two categories. Uh, sometimes they write good songs but they can't play their instruments very well. Sometimes 
They play their instruments great, but their songs are pretty awful. But the Buzzcocks, thankfully, are one of those rare bands, such as the Ramones and, and uh, the Clash, who actually can play their instruments and write amazing, beautiful songs that have uh, pop um, sensibility as well. And that's what made them pretty popular and influential. Um, this album also has some pretty interesting experimentation on it, which I also think may have been influenced by some of these German bands from a few years earlier. Uh, this album is from 1978, and uh, it has uh, some driving drum beats that are reminiscent of uh, Noi. Uh, speaking of punk, I got this. It's a soundtrack album uh, called Cruising, which is a film from 1979 featuring Al Pacino. Um, and uh, I picked this one up. I hadn't heard of it before, but I recognized the director's name. Um, he, uh, William Friedkin, and he did uh, a very cool movie called The, the Exorcist, which has some great uh, modern 20th century music in it, as well as uh, some uh, Mike Oldfield, Tubular Bells, which was used to great effect in that film as well. Uh, I haven't seen this film. It seems a little bit interesting, a, a crime mystery drama where Al Pacino goes undercover. And um, the reason I picked this up, besides the fact I recognized the director's name and knew his taste in music, was uh, I was looking at the songs, and uh, there's a song by a famous hardcore punk band called Germs um, from the Los Angeles scene. Um, they had an album called G.I. in 1979, and there's a song on this soundtrack that they specifically recorded for this film that is not available on their albums. Uh, moving into the jazz category, I uh, got picked this one up in uh, Athens, Georgia recently at a great store um, called... Uh, um, I forgot what it's called, but it's the big store in Athens. Anyway, uh, this is a great uh, record on the famous ECM label, which releases a lot of beautifully produced jazz and uh, modern classical music, minimalist stuff like Steve Reich. Uh, this is a double album, Gatefold Pressing, and um, the producer, Manfred Eichner, um, worked on this one with one of my favorite musicians, Keith Jarrett. Uh, usually he's known as a pianist and sometimes saxophonist, but on this album he's playing a uh, Baroque organ, which has some beautiful tones and natural reverb from the building that it's in. And um, the cool thing about Keith Jarrett is a lot of his albums, it's just completely solo, just him playing by himself and improvising everything on the spot, which is amazing. Uh, I also got this uh, on Discogs for just a couple bucks. It's on a uh, semi-private label called Random Radar Records from Silver Springs, Maryland, which released a uh, Canterbury-influenced uh, band called The Muffins. Anyway, this is a 1979 album, kind of a mystery. I couldn't find anything out about it, but it's basically a free jazz collective sort of thing with this interesting insert. And there's some cool tones on it, but uh, honestly, it wasn't very inspired like some other free jazz that I like. I also got this jazz record by a famous uh, keyboard player, George Duke. Uh, he worked with Frank Zappa in the uh, 70s, and this album he released before he joined with him. And uh, he does... Uh, Pretty interesting mix of big band and jazz and psychedelic rock on this with some cool fuzz guitars and he covers some Laura Nyro songs as well in an interesting instrumental way. There's also a uh, cover of the Beatles come together. I, f I also found uh, this thing on an interesting series called the Music Minus One. It's a uh, box set double album with uh, uh, booklet as well, and basically this series was pressed for uh, beginning musicians who 
wanted to uh, either learn uh, some p specific songs or better techniques on their instruments and it also provides uh, some instrumental backing tracks for you to practice your instrument on so this one's made for for uh, upright bass players and on a similar um, label is uh, this uh, Jamie Abersol series he's a saxophone player and he had his own uh, student learning label I think he recorded on a couple of ECM records as well this is from the 70s and late 70s and it's uh, some Woody Shaw um, uh, tracks and the cool thing about this one is it's mixed in stereo and uh, the left channel is just the uh, rhythm section and the right channel is just the uh, melody so you can switch your stereo to uh, decide what you want to uh, practice on and finally um, this uh, reggae record I got on Discog as well it's uh, a guy I haven't heard of before but he's doing some interesting uh, pop hits in a reggae style and uh, one of the cooler songs on this was a cover of Be My Baby that famous Phil Spector produced uh, hit from the early days and uh, his version the reggae version for some reason he added a uh, super distorted out of tune fuzz guitar which gave it a uh, fun effect on that song and um, if you're interested there's a whole compilation of uh, psychedelic reggae hits from that um, fun era in the 60s when everyone was experimenting with some of these studio techniques and um, Oh, by the way, I should mention with that, those Music Minus One and uh, Practice Records, another cool thing that you can do with them is because of the mix and the original purpose, you can actually isolate some of the uh, instruments or rhythm parts, and uh, DJs can use that for um, some mix or even forming a whole, producing a whole new song on top of it. Uh, well, anyway, those are some of the cool things I found lately. Um, those reissues I got for a great price, and once I figured out uh, the best uh, source and the best customer service, I can see myself definitely buying more as soon as I see some cool things going up there. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, just post something, and... Uh, Subscribe for, for my new videos and see what I find next. And also you can check out my uh, other videos to uh, see what I found um, in the past few months. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.